Man, look at that. My ship is really coming together. It should only be two, maybe three more weeks before I'm able to take her out in her new maiden voyage, since she is basically going to be an entirely different vehicle by the time we're done with her. It really is amazing how fast all this has come together since I achieved the ability to create duplicates of myself. So like I used to say back when I played Command and Conquer games, any problem can be solved by throwing enough guys at it. Even though I'm not entirely sure where my duplicates come from, where the energy to create them comes from, if they're from a alternate universe or some similar thing like that, I am in one way or another creating new people. I'm adding new people to this universe each time I do it, which got me thinking about gems and how they basically spawn new people into existence. Like, yeah, humans can reproduce, we can create babies, and then they can grow to maturity and join society. But with gems, it's a little different. Gems come into existence fully formed, capable of doing whatever job they were designed to do. With, if not full knowledge of that job, then some impression, at the very least, of what behaviors are necessary for that job to get done. Amethyst can be so aggressive in part because she's a quartz, she's supposed to be. And considering how similar we've seen common gems gems tend to be in both appearance and personality, it really is like they're just creating multiples of the same person. I mean, sure, those people can then grow into fully realized individuals, but it doesn't really seem like they start that way, which is really just how my mind got to the idea for this theory, but I still think it's interesting food for thought, and maybe I'll talk about it in detail in a later video. It's a really interesting concept, one that you do see in science fiction. What isn't such a common concept, though, and something that Steven Universe seems to be rolling with at this point is that an individual, that being Pink Diamond, aka Rose Quartz, seems to have the same ability to create gems that gem technology does. Like, I want to be clear that what we saw in this clip right here was not Rose creating a gem, she was just creating something that looked like a gem, and I'll talk about why I'm so sure of that in a minute. But members of the crew have said that she can create fully realized gems, that creating fragments like this is not the limit to her abilities. This means that in theory, Rose could create fully realized people simply by grabbing some dirt. Even if Rose applied some additional gem power to the components to hurry things along, hence the sparkle that we see at the end of the process. That's the gist of it, and that's actually kind of scary if you really think about it. Like, it explains how she was able to do stuff like create the gemstone flowers that bloomed from the evil killer moss that she planted near the outskirts of a fully populated human town. Rose was really irresponsible. Like, we all agree on that, right? It also may explain things like the heaven and earth beetles, which despite the fact that the crew says they're corrupted gems, they just don't seem to be. Even corrupted gems wouldn't have to be brought together to breed, but gems created by Rose as insect gem hybrids using some form of her ability to create living gems would need to breed if they had organic bodies capable of doing so. They would have the instinctual compulsion to do that. And that may have even been Rose's intention when she created them, assuming that she did. I actually made a video about that. I'll put it up in the little corner thingy, the name of which you guys keep telling me and I keep forgetting. Not on purpose, I might add. Like, honestly, I think that that was Pink Diamond's entire thing. I think that prior to getting her own colony, Pink Diamond's purpose in the Diamond Authority was to create gems. That her power set was suited towards creating, protecting, and nurturing gems, and that modern gem reproduction technology was based on her abilities. I've talked about that a few times too. I mean, heck, if this is true, it even explains how she was able to work out how to create Steven. She already had some working knowledge of how gems could be created, and so just had to adapt that to doing it the human way. If all of the weird gem hybridy things that we've seen aside from Steven, the flowers and this lizard that Lion was eating in one of the episodes, and the heaven and earth beetles and stuff like that, if those were all experiments that Rose created to better understand how she might make Steven, well I think that fits super well with some of the other context details which seem to suggest that Pink was in charge of gem reproduction, or at the very least she was the gem with the power set which led to the way that gems are reproduced today. That that was her domain as a diamond. Like how it's been confirmed at this point that Yellow Diamond's domain is the military. This scene of Pink Diamond creating fake Pink Diamond gem shards supports this better than any recent detail in the show. As do any assertions by the crew that she can create entire gems, functioning gems, which does seem to be the implication of the statement that I've been referred to in the past. A statement that I can't find again or I would show it on screen. So if anyone can find it, if anyone has it, please link to it in 
the comment section down below. I'd really appreciate it. But once again, as I said before, that's not what we're seeing Rose do when she creates those shards, not specifically. The creation of gems has been either shown to us or described to us a few times in the series to varying degrees of detail. But we can infer that a certain few components are necessary to create a gem. Minerals from the earth, which make up the solid gem itself, and seem to determine which color the gem is, as well as what specifically it's called. Pressure from the earth pressing in on it, some amount of time, and the liquid which is inserted into the earth by the injectors. We can infer that the minerals from the ground, the pressure from the earth, and the time that it takes the gem to form all contribute to the gemstone becoming solid, becoming structurally what it is once the gem that it's attached to emerges. So what is that liquid? What role does it play in this process? Well, I think that's pretty obvious. I think that the liquid is where the information which will eventually be stored on the gemstone comes from. That it's a liquid information storage medium which somehow also has a property which pulls minerals from the earth around it and that then the pressure of the earth compresses it down into a compact gemstone. And if you look at what Pink Diamond does in this scene, she takes soil which contributes the minerals from the earth and then applies pressure to them for a few seconds which if you squint a little bit is time plus pressure so theoretically what she does here could create a physical gemstone but if I'm right about what the liquid from the injector is for, that gemstone wouldn't have any information on it. It may also not be capable of containing information, as it's possible that, that liquid information storage medium that some ingredient within it causes the gemstone to be arranged in such a way that information can be stored on it in the first place. Pink Dime would have to be able to include that final component as well. She would have to be able to produce something at least resembling that liquid and combine it from the materials taken from the earth. Which seems impossible since any Anything created by a gemstone is just temporary, i.e. any liquid created by Pink Diamond's gem would be holographic simulated liquid, and the moment that her gem stopped projecting that simulated liquid, it would disappear and that gem would lose its vital component. But I can explain how she can get around this, too, in another one of my videos, which again I will link to up in the little corner doobly-doo. I theorize that gems can create actual physical components by using the seemingly infinite energy that their gems can produce to convert some of that energy into matter following specific patterns. In fact, this is how I think Rose's tears worked. Her tears were specifically said to come from her gem, which doesn't really make sense unless her gem is what's producing them. If she can produce a liquid like tears from her gem, then why can't she produce a liquid information storage medium? It would probably be more complex than just tears, and the information that she could disseminate with it would probably be limited to information stored on her own gem. But I see no reason why she wouldn't be able to do that too. And so I do think that she would be able to create full living sentient gems. Even if someone on the crew hadn't said flat out that she can do that, I would still expect that she could probably do that. It may even be an extension of the same power which she uses to heal people, kind of like how fusion seems to be an extension of the same power that gems are used to shapeshift. Which is interesting because it means that Steven might be able to do this too. And while I doubt that Steven will ever create another gem entirely from scratch using just his own powers, as I just don't see where that would fit into the narrative of the show, with one notable exception that I'll touch on here in just a couple of minutes, I can see one potential use for this power. As we have seen other gem technology that seems to be based on the abilities of the diamonds and that technology seems to be in some way limited compared to the diamond version of the power. For example, the gem destabilizer tech seems to be limited to either a fixed location in its by far least potent form, assuming that the force fields on Peridot's ship were gem destabilizer tech in the first place, or limited to melee weapons with about the reach of a sword. This is in stark contrast to Yellow's ability to just point at someone and effectively poof them. Like, yeah, the beam from her hand has to hit them, but that doesn't tend to be a thing that doesn't happen very often. If other instances of technology based on diamond abilities follows the same pattern, if we assume that the kindergarten injectors are just a much larger, more cumbersome version of whatever Pink does to create gems, then it is possible that there are other uses for that specific ability when it's in the hands of an actual person, rather than a giant cumbersome machine. And because Steven has shown the potential to improve upon his mother's abilities, not just as a half-human, but as a better person than her, let's just get it out in the open, he's a better person than she was, and that seems to be the kind of thing that this show likes to reward by giving him new abilities. He has the potential to find even more uses for this power, ones that Rose never would have discovered herself. Maybe even combining it with something like his healing spit to perform a miracle. This is 
getting a little too cheesy even for me. I'm saying that he might be able to fix Shattered Gems. That's what I'm getting at with this theory. I think it's a long shot. I don't think that's a place that the crew is necessarily going to go, but I think it's possible. I think it's possible that they're setting all of this up as a means for Steven to be able to do that. Like, I still think that they'll impose some limitations upon this power. Maybe he'll only be able to bring back gems that were shattered very recently or something. And I don't think that he'll be able to ever, like, fix a gem that doesn't have all of its parts or a gem that's been used in a forced fusion or something like that. But I do think that this is possible. I do think that this is the only excuse that the show could ever come up with to justify this particular plot direction. Most interestingly, though, I think it may also be possible for Steven to use this ability, keeping in mind that all of Rose's information is stored somewhere within his genetic makeup, to create a new gem which is made in the image of his own and then disseminate a copy of Rose's information through it, allowing him to bring back Rose as she was at the moment that she disappeared while creating him, reintroducing her to the show with no ill effect to himself. I don't think it's going to happen, but he could, in theory, do that. It is a thing. I mean, after all, it's not as if the writers have a problem with Steven defying death in the first place. He's already done it once before with Lars. If this happens, I expect it will be a dramatic moment to kind of finish out the series. And even then, I still, I want to stress, don't think that this is likely to happen. Just possible and worth talking about. But what do you guys think? Have I managed to make something of these ideas, or do you have some detail that I've missed in mind which could shatter this theory completely? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below or over in my Discord, link in the description. But either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.